Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. At our last club meeting, I got a nice wet stump of aspen in the wood raffle. And, uh, hmm, what do I do with it? And, well, Dave, who had actually contributed the stump uh, and, and said that it was only cut a week before, said, well, ah, how about making a lampshade out of it? So I said, okay, let's, I have did a lampshade several years ago and I'm itching for a project to try out on my deep hollowing rig and I because I said I would not do another until I had a good deep hollowing rig. So here's the lampshade and uh, I hollowed it and worked on the outside a little bit but you all seem to like to show both successes and failures so there you go. This is very fresh aspen. Dave had wrapped it in plastic. No checks in sight. Looks like this will be nice. Now to mount it to the lathe. A steel faceplate should do the job. I'm securing it with some good sturdy wood screws. Then off to the races with my bowl gouge. But, as I progress, the wood is somewhat skewed away from the expected axis. Apparently, the end was not cut as square as I thought. If I continue, I'll be removing a lot of wood to get it round. So, back out the screws and let's try again. Now mounted to a two-prong drive center, again with my bowl gouge, I can proceed to round it off and preserve more of the wood. This wood is very wet and very cold. My fingers are freezing. Once it is round and balanced, I can trim the end so that it is perpendicular to the lathe axis. Then remount the wood again to the steel faceplate. Please note that this is not the same end as I previously screwed the faceplate to and I am not using drywall screws. Then true the round again and trim the body. Boy, these wet savings are cold on my hands. Hollowing will go much better if I drill out the center. This is a long 3 8 inch drill with a handle. I can drill about an inch to an inch and a half at a time. Now for hollowing with this deep hollowing rig. This uses a bar with extra square bars welded to the sides as outriggers to resist twisting. A stand at the end of the lathe captures this bar set and keeps it level. A quarter inch cutter is mounted to the opposite end. I have a USB boroscope camera mounted above the cutter that is attached to my phone. The phone is mounted to a stand with a piece of transparent plastic taped over the screen. Then I've marked the location of the cutter on the plastic. 
As I move the tool, the camera shows the relative position of the tool to the edge of the wood. I'm still making adjustments to this camera setup. To start with, pressure from the camera cord is moving the camera and twisting the wood holding the camera. I added a screw to keep the wood from rotating, cinched up the bar and re-routed the camera cable and tied it down better. That helped. No matter what, I have to stop regularly to clean out the shavings. What a pile of damp wood! The inside of the lampshade is rough from the stringy aspen. The cutter cannot leave a smooth surface on the wet aspen. Instead, I try a curved cabinet scraper. After all, the hollow is big enough for my hand and the scraper. But you should probably not consider this a safe maneuver, but it does clean up the inside. Okay, the walls are thin enough, probably less than a quarter inch. I'm not going thinner. But since the lampshade has survived so far, I need to do a little more work to smooth the exterior. I've freshly sharpened my large skew, it leaves a beautifully smooth surface with some very fine shavings. Then trouble. I have noticed a little wobble that I attributed to wood movement due to wood removed and moisture loss. I don't know the exact root cause of the explosion. Definitely there was a catch with the skew, but I'm making the same stroke as several previous ones. One difference is that I'm working on the very end where the wobble is worst. So why the wobble? After the explosion, I see all the screws in the steel, still in the steel faceplate, but the wood is totally gone. Maybe the screws started to pull out, thus producing the wobble that induced the catch. I'm I'm not sure. One thing I do know is that this lampshade is not salvageable. I will not try to glue this back together again. Another is that I was the operator and I have to take responsibility. I was wearing my full face shield and needed it. The faceplate saved my face. So here's the blooper. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. There are now eight years worth, over 400 videos to choose from on my website. But please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.